Greetings, fellow monster maniacs, and I'm glad you've joined me for what is the final creature feature of this season of Monsters of Rock, the Lordy story. In our last outing, we'll be paying a visit to a solitary chamber, or rather, cell, at the top of a house, which is separated by all the other apartments by a gallery and a staircase. Within this chamber is a workshop of filthy creation, where a beast of hideous characteristics resides, with watery glowing eyes, flowing black hair, and lips as black as ash, with prominent white fangs, horns affixed his head and face, his body formed from the remains of cadavers and the rubble of a dilapidated fortress. This Leviathan is Lordy, and the reason we've traveled here is to find out how the latest creation was made. Scream, Writers Guild. So, like, obviously, when the last time we spoke, we were just about to find out the new guitarist of Lordy back last summer and we'd obviously spoken that it was going to be Kone and everything and what he was going to look like and now that he's kind of come into the band you've toured with him the record's been recorded and released what has he brought to the table for Lordy? Um, <laughs> his dick is what he bought <laughs> not he slammed him on the table. No. <laughs> uh, no. He he brought a lot of youthful energy and uh, enthusiasm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And two nice jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, only a few. No, not that many. <laughs> mm, but a few good jokes, yeah. And uh, a lot of, you know, bad air. Because that guy farts a lot, I can yeah. tell you for that. <laughs> well, but he toned that down. I'm telling you, this tells a lot about the dude. Mm, when we first met, like physically, he yeah. was farting away like a fucking tractor, like the whole time. And, and I'm so proud of every single sound and, you know, smell that he could, you know. It, it was like, look what I can do, kind of moment. <laughs> And then it, it's funny for for few seconds because I've never met a person who on the first, you know, on the first meeting already is like without any hesitation is just you know letting letting the gas out and loud ones, you know, like ooh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> so so then at some point we had to tell him that, dude, it's fun, but <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> maybe not the whole time. So. Then he, you know, tries to keep his down store, down, uh, downstairs door shut a little bit more. But on the tour, for example, I mean, he he sleeps like uh, um, not next to me, but you know, in the bunk that is like across the aisle from me. Yeah. So yeah, a few nights I woken up, I woke up the terrible smell, and I thought it's Mana, but <laughs> nope, it was him. <laughs> well, well, well. So, so these are the first things me. that come to my mind when you ask that what he, what has he brought into the table of flooring? Gas. You know, <laughs> gas. Yeah. No. no, no. He's a funny guy. Yeah. No, no. And he does uh, seem like a genuine guy. Well, so. Oh, he is. Yeah. So um, obviously, with this new album coming out, and um, it was obviously recorded quite a while ago. Now at this point, and. Well, I guess when people were kind of chatting to you about the album and a lot of the other interview interviewers kind of confused at the timeline of when this album yeah. was kind of released or, oh, sorry, not released, but recorded. So it kind of threw yeah. a lot of people off, like not understanding when you found the time to record it. But this was obviously done last yeah. springtime. As Kone just kind of came into the band, you were kind of in the middle of, uh, like, writing the material and everything like that. So um, yeah. was it kind of... Uh, did we talk? Did we talk about it already? No, we did didn't we record about. We didn't talk about okay. the timeline of recording it. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so to make clear how it was, 
in January 22, a little, little bit more than a year ago, I get a call from my manager, start making a new album. I said, all right, let's do it. Then a month later, uh, I mean, we, within that month when I was already writing the new material, um, the situation with Eamon and uh, the rest of the band, you know, yeah. well, we know where it led, led up to, you know. And on the day, uh, on, on the night before Russia act, attacked Ukraine, uh, I called Eamon and made that infamous call. And the next day, on the day when, actually when, when Russia attacked, uh, I called Kone. Right. And that's, that's how it started. And, then, and, and his first task, of course, you know, when he joined, in, you know, I, I think the next day we, we said, okay, you're in, you're in, you know. And then uh, the first time we actually physically then met was already here at my place when he and he came over and we already started recording right away. You know, so we recorded, you know, parts of the, yeah. you know, album, yeah. guitars and bass here at, at, at my work. Workroom and, and and that's how that's how it started. So and, and this must have been somewhere, you know, in March, like a year ago or something. Right. When this happened, something around that time, something like that. Okay. Mm. And then in what was it in May or was it even April or something? When Amen said that he's out, and we revealed that, or actually he revealed that before, you know. Anyway. Yeah. And then we said, yeah, Eamon is no longer in the band. But of course, people thought that that was happening at that moment. But no, it, it already happened like three months prior to that. And then then a few weeks after the, the Eamon uh, uh, announcement, we told that Kona is the new guitar player. But of course, at, the, at that time of the announcement, he had been in the band, you know, already quite a few months already. Yeah. And yeah. we were already almost done recording the... I know, actually, by that time, we, we were done recording this new album. And then, when we made the new costume for him, and, you know, created the character and everything, and we went for the first uh, uh, show of Kone, which was in, uh, like, a festival in the beginning of June in Finland, some, something like that, uh, we had this new album already. It was already wrapped up, and it was, you yes. know, going to mastering plant already at that time. So, for us, it's an old album. We yeah. did this year ago. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, what was the decision for you to kind of make a album influenced by old school monster horror movies? Like, what was the what was the decision uh, for doing that? Well, it was kind of it, it, well, you know, you know, and people who are <laughs> following our band and yeah. know the history well, uh, let's. You know, the, the, <laughs> the selection of different horror genre, you know, thing is that you can pick up as, as a theme. They, 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 it's getting quite thin. You know, the, the sack is getting quite <laughs> empty in a way that you're like, like kind of like, I mean, I mean, there's quite a few songs that about this and that, and you know. So I just wanted to somehow go back to the basics and then, uh, well, you know, actually, I think my original idea, um, well, it, I guess it went like this. First of all, I, the, the musical theme was there first. I wanted to go to the, well, I've been saying this quite a lot now. You know, I wanted to reset the factory default settings of Florida. You know, 20 years, that was, you know, the, at, the, at the time of, you know, starting to write the album. 20 years since Get Heavy, 30 years since the beginning. Uh, okay, <laughs> the very big lineup change now with, with, with Damon Alt and Kone in. Yeah. And uh, after seven albums of, well, you know what, all kinds of different kind of loaded music. Mm. So it was it was the, it was about time. And, and to be honest, you know, be, even before Low Diversity, you think about, you know, Sexism or yeah. whatever album came yeah. before that, they are not your typical. They are like, they're like the the modern new newer lot in a yeah. way. So we yeah. haven't really been in that field. Well, yeah, Abusement Park and Humanimals they are quite traditional lot, but not really. But yeah, you know, more like that. So it felt natural to reset the music, and then it felt also natural to reset the whole 
thing again, you know. Mm-hmm. So so I was actually thinking even, you know, when, when if we talk about the image thing, I was even thinking about going going to like redoing my first costume, like re sculpting it for a moment. I thought that okay, I would just mm-hmm. do a like 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 version point two oh point two or how do you say it? Yeah. You know? it's like the yeah. You know, make the get heavy costume, but make it you know just new sculpt sculpting of that. You know, and make it a little bit better. Right. But then I then I well I, I'll, I'll save that for later. You know, because I mean, yeah, the idea, the thematic theme. It I think it uh, originally when I was I knew that what kind of music I'm going to write. So I it would be very 80s. I knew, I knew that I want to you know have like get heavy, the apocalypse. Babes for breakfast and uh, and definitely you know a little bit of humanimals there mm. and and blend this all together and there's no room for abracadabra kind of material there's no room for the uh, uh, scare force one kind of material that yeah. this has to be like the meat and potatoes shit yeah. but when it comes to the like like um, theme my original idea was to put like I, I was more like concentrating on the 80s horror because that's you know that's where I'm coming from mm. so I was thinking about Freddy and you know Jason and Leatherface and you know those guys Pinhead yeah. and, and so, but then I realized that well uh, there's quite a many references already in the Lord of the Rings about Evil Dead so it's kind of like boring because like yeah you know it's done so many times in the Lord of <laughs> in the Lordy catalog, mm. same, pretty much the same with Texas Chainsaw and all these like these these eighties iconic characters. I mean, we've you know used them already a little bit too much, maybe even. Well, I don't know, but but you know quite a lot. I, you know, yeah. but I thought, okay, trying to find some sort of a different view to it. But then I realized, like, okay, actually the original, like the classic vintage horror monsters from the movies we haven't really touched i actually have been quite quite determined not to touch them you know and 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 like for example not to write about werewolves because i think they're a bit stupid and and, you know in some ways i mean how can you you know it's like eh, you know i like i I like movies about werewolves but but you know as as a character like how do you you know well well there is bring bring it on the ranging huntress return that is there but other than that, and and vampire is the same thing. There's kind of, you know, you could you could say that that uh, my heaven is your hell is a kind of like a like a vampire mm. song, but not really. But you know, those are not my favorite breeds of, of of monsters. So I was like, okay, maybe it's time to do that. And on this album, I don't think. Oh, no, I was about to say that there are no zombies, but there are, of yeah. course, in humanoid there are kind of like the zombies there. Well, but. To me, they are more like Borgs from Star Trek, actually. So anyway, whatever. But interestingly, one of the main key mm-hmm. keys of the of the theme that opened up the whole thing was not a movie per se. I got a new pinball machine at that time, which is the Bram Stoker's Dracula pinball machine. Oh, okay. Uh, when writing the writing the album, and then it's like 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 so. Then I had to watch the movie again, and I I know it by heart already because I mean I love that movie. Yeah. And from there, it started opening up the whole thing. And I nice. think the first song that I wrote for the no, it was the second song I wrote for this album was the in the castle of Dracula. Okay. And and but the first one was Heavengeance. But the second one of Dracula, and so then I knew what I was doing. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. in terms yeah. of that that movie you watched, was that the one with um, Gary Oldman in it and Keanu Reeves? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is a good one. I love that one. Yeah, that's the best yeah. one. Of them all. Yeah. Um, so yeah. obviously, and then I go then on. I also I, I with, with that in that vein, then I also watched the the Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, the 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 one. You know the the remake. Of, I mean, De they're all remakes. But the, the one with Robert De Niro as yeah. the monster, yeah. and then then uh, I watched the American Werewolf in London, and you know those movies that I watched Robert a long time ago. But, but you know, I, again, yeah. so you know, and also I I did you know watch all the you know all the all the vintage uh, 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 Universal movies from the 30s and 40s. Yeah. You know, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, Invisible Man, Wolf Man, uh, Mummy, you know, all this. Yeah. You know, so, so, 
I kind of like it's was like theme you know thing. soaking myself in the in the in the in the influences there. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, when we kind of look then at the musical side of things, because I was only speaking to Kone a couple of days ago, and he was saying when you guys obviously met up and you sat down to write music together, and he's obviously. Um, a co-writer on Inhumanoids, Scarecrow, and Lucifer Primeval. When he said he sat down mm-hmm. with you, he wanted to kind of see how the two of you musically work work together and also clash yeah. at the same time. And he was yeah. when you listen to this album, from my ears anyway, I do kind of see that this album really showcases his talents in many ways. So, Fuck yeah. was and this I wanted something to, you wanted? I wanted to have that. Okay. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, I mean. But when you have a new guy in, and if he has, you know, if he has skills like that, you should not, you know, hide them. Mm. You know, it was almost the same feeling when when Otis joined the band after Kira. Yeah. So it was like, like okay, when we went 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 on tour, it's like okay, play as much as play and play as as uh, crazy things as you can, just to you know show, you know. Look what I can do, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So do that. So so that's exactly the same feel as okay, do it. Like just, you know, be be faithful to the songs and be be faithful, especially you know, to the if you're playing the old songs, so you know, play the solos uh, that Amen has played, and and respect the 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 essence of those, but but make them your own. You know, yes, so yeah. basically doing the same thing what Bruce Kulick and you know Bruce Kulick was doing to Ace Ace really songs mm. solos yeah. you know and basically doing that and I'm 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 deliberately leaving Mark Saint John and Vinnie Vincent out because they really weren't doing that they really weren't really trying to um, have Ace there in their solos they they tried, you know so disregard. so that's why I'm talking about I'm skipping those two guys you know yeah. in the, in this. Yeah. Uh, so absolutely and on the album of course it was like yeah go crazy but of course you know and well everybody now can hear I mean he he he, he's, he has a very good style in doing the stuff but he can also showcase when it's needed to when when the song exactly. needs that yeah. he can he can do the shit but, but he doesn't need to do that the whole time no you know? no no yeah. and when yeah. this album kind of starts when you when you put it on first because when I was speaking to Mana yesterday he said that when you were looking at doing the Dead Again Jane uh, song, that you wanted this bombastic start to the album, kind of like the 80s yeah. Kiss records, like with Animalize, mm-hmm. like, I've Had Enough, and mm-hmm. Look It Up, there's Exciter, yeah. and King of the Mountain on Asylum. So when you're kind of aiming to kind of use those influences to write your own song, is that is that an easy process to work through, or is that kind of more complicated in a way, because you're trying to not to copy well, this? But make your own. Well, with Jane, well, well, with Jane, it was easy because then I, um, I actually had like, like I, I, I told everybody as as usual. I told them that okay, now's the time. If you have riffs, if you you know want to write something, now's the time. Just keep sending me them. So everyone did, you know. Okay. And uh, with Jane and Mana, it was the thing that I I deliberately said, told Mana that okay, we need us, you know. I didn't necessarily mean that it would be an opening song that that I'm like asking if he would have anything in mind, but I I, I was talking about that with him, and I think he came up with two riffs. Okay. While we were talking about, you know, I had enough into the fire, you know, from Animal Eyes and uh, Exciter and you know those songs. So then those riffs that he had were actually using the same chords. Same fingering as as in 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 I had enough. Right. So of course you have the same feeling, and those are kind of chords that are not used. Well, they they are, they are more like in, in in the category of more rarely used, you know, chords. Yeah. You know. So of course I'm like, all right, there we go. That's this is fucking cool. It sounds like fucking, you know, it's not the same, but just the same chords as in as in as in I had enough into the fire. So mm. cool. And I guess that is the that is the verse. I I did tweak it a little bit to some direction, I guess. Then I made the main riff. You know that would be kind of like my version of I've had enough. Like, you know, you know. Any, anybody now listening to this can can go and listen to them by, side by side side these songs. Jane and I had enough into the fire. So 
that's where the influence, you know, that's where that's where the influence comes from, you know, for the song. And then and then uh, the the beat under the solo, I think uh, Mana ha- thought that this is a riff that could be like a verse, right. but nope, I, I I used it in 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 the in the under the solo where it works better in my in my book. Okay. And it turned out great. I I like the song, and I guess yeah. the whole band love you know loves the song. And yeah. actually, then. Months and months, 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 many months later, when Mana was like just like asking in in our band's WhatsApp group that okay, so <laughs> and the way he asked is like like have have we already decided what is gonna be the uh, what is gonna be the main single or Jane? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> the, the, the the sentence even in Finnish was. Like that, it was really fucking funny. Uh, have we already decided what is going to be the first single or Jane? <laughs> <laughs> so, so just, yeah, Jane. You know, everybody. I mean, there was never ever any 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 doubt about that. No. It, 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 you know, of course, it should be. When you look at this kind of record, there's obviously a lot of tracks in it that have these long intros in them, and there's obviously it's done to set the theme or to set the kind of setting of each track so is it hard for you when you're trying to kind of compose these songs and balance them out in the order to make sure that the flow is even through the album so that you're not having like a long intro after a long intro that's kind of split up and varied no no we 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 usually what we do is like like we just you know do the songs Mm. and of course you know that this is you know you know the opening track that's what you know yeah Pretty much most of the time. It's not not everything, but but you know you know that this is an opening track, and then then you kind of have a feeling like for the, for example on this album you know that okay end credit is gonna be the last song that's like no doubt about that. Yeah. Everything else in between, they're just songs and they need to find the right order. But we have Jan, Jan Hound Kruna our A&R, who uh, who is the king of. That shit, you know, the 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 song. He's the song order master. Yeah. He loves doing that. He loves playing with that much more than I do. You know, he makes this song, you know, playlists on his phone or computer, and he, you know, tries out different versions and uh, a lot, you know, and mm-hmm. and and he's known to do that, you know, with his own bands too. And he's, he's he really because it it does make a difference, you know, what you know song because I mean it, it, it does make a difference, you know. It, you know, song can either you know fall or I mean, you you should not put put a very shitty song in the end of the album because then it will be you know it it, it will you know be the shittiness will it's multiply in the end of the album. Yeah, yeah. 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 It just you know it, it just but you know within the first four songs on the album, you at the same time you need to put like good songs. Like the best ones, kinda. But also, you, you, you. If if you feel like one of the songs would need like an extra push, just from the position on the album, that's where you should put it, something like that. Because it's it's yeah. like, and any, anybody can try it. And you know, you put you put your you know playlist on shuffle, and then you see that ah, uh-huh. you know, it it it, it has a. It doesn't work that well if if you know the songs already. Then yeah. it doesn't matter. But yeah. but. The, the first two times when you listen to the album, it, it, the, the, there's a, it's a weird psychological thing. But when it comes to these all these long intros, and of course all the SCG things are done separately. Mm. And this time there, there there was actually two of them, as we know. There's the horror, <laughs> Ruiz horror show thingy, yeah. and then there was the Oscarctic Awards. Yeah. And, <laughs> and and then these whole little little you know intros. You know, other intros in most of the songs, or at least half of the songs. Now, those places were not decided before uh, everything was already, you know, done and mixed, you know. And that's when you start doing the shuffle, that where do you put everything. Okay, many people have noticed that that, that, that are weirded out that the horror Ruiz... No, no, Nosferu Ruiz horror show is not the actual beginning of the album. Yes. And yeah. there, it's not that, because I think it... It, it, I, I think it differently, and, and clearly, for most of the people, the the my idea doesn't you know come through. It doesn't 
it doesn't work in their brain the same way as it worked in my brain. For me, it is like um, the the intro of Jane. You would one might wonder that why why is the intro of Jane that whole one minute long? Why isn't that the SCG? And then you know the song starts because I I think that's part of Jane. That the intro is part of Jane. You know, it's not an it's not a separate SCG there for me. Okay. And I think that is like the oh, that is like the opening credits for this album. That whole song in its entirety, including the intro. And then when 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 Nosfer Ruiz starts to talk about his you know you know thing is there, it's like introduction to the album. So it's kind of like the same way like on the Jane music video. That's that was my idea. So it's like first there is the opening credit, which is Jane, mm. and then. There's the, 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 okay, here's here's what we're going to have tonight. Like the first speak, you know, right. after, on, 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 at a live show. Yes. And then, you know, the rest of the evening will, you know, go forward like that. So right. that that's what, and for me, it was very clear. But clearly, you know, most of the times it, it happens that something is very clear in your head. And, and, and I still feel it like that. And I hear it like that. But I understand why people don't. People are like, well, why, why is it like this? But then again, if you think about it, if you would put first, first, if you put Ralph open up the album and talk about all his thingies, and then you have, would have the long intro of Jane, yeah. After that, mm. it would be it would be like like what like three minutes. It would be like a, the, the apocalypse yeah. all over again. You would have three minutes before the band kicks in, yeah. and that's too long. Mm. Now, one could ask that why why do you need that fucking intro for uh, uh, Jane? Why do you need that that whole thing? Because I want to. <laughs> 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 it belongs there. It, I want it to be there. Yeah. It needs to be there. It's part of that song. Exactly. So, and I wanted exactly. to have that. I wanted to have that get heavy version to Scottic Circle Gathering Take Two. Yeah. I wanted to have a you know, okay. so that's why it it, it is there. Right. And it's, okay. it's it's my you know it's fucking our album, God yeah, damn it. Exactly. <laughs> so don't tell me how it should be. This is the way it should be. And if you like it, yay, you're yeah. right. It's good. Yeah, yeah. If you don't like it, fuck off. You don't. What, what do you know anyway? You don't know. You don't know shit. Go and make your own. You know, form your own band and do your own album and make it the way you want it. But don't come telling me in what order they should be in. Yeah. And, um, yeah. When you're kind of talking about the intros there, I guess one of the intros is, is very unique in the Lordy world that you've done for this album is Thing in the Cage, uh, where you've had this no. kind of throat singing kind of Amazonian uh, uh, tribe uh, uh, kind uh, uh, of stuff. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, that, that one. Like, what was your kind of, did you just want to try this out? Or was this something you had in the tank I for a long yeah. time? Okay. It, it's something that I've been, I've been, you know, thinking about a long time. Many times <laughs> at sound checks or at rehearsal, I do, ah, wow, 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 wow. This is my, the way I opening my voice. Right. Okay. I keep doing that, like, you know. Yeah. I sometimes even on stage, you know, in the speaks, I, I might do that. And usually on the sound checks, I'm doing that. And and then I I love a cappella, you know, to around Christmas time. At least in Finland, it's very popular that okay. you know the the traditional Christmas yeah. songs are sang by a cappella bands, and they're really good. I, I fucking love the arrangements on those. So I thought, hey, it would be so cool to do an a cappella with myself with the lordy voices, yeah. like like. Uh, so I just, yeah, I, I'll, I'll try to do that. Of course, there are some limitations <laughs> with that, but but it uh, but it sounds, you know, it, uh, yeah, it is what I wanted to do. It, yeah. it, it it's how I, you know, imagined it. Exactly. It's, um, yeah. And I think it's, it's, yeah. it's working it, well. So yeah. and I think it, it really it, hmm? it gives a different taste to a Lordy song. Like it is obviously it's something different yeah. than I've heard before. So it gives something different to it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I, if you if you ask any of the bandmates, you know, mm. past or present, you yeah. know, they, they will say, Oh, we've heard that <laughs> you know, a little bit too much because they they've been enjoying that you know, that treat, you know, the gift that keeps on giving like yeah. ah, wah, 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 all the time. So so but I mean yeah. And and, and, and then one I was asking that do we are we gonna have that uh, intro live? I was like, mm, no. Not, at least not on the Sabaton tour, because yeah. I mean, and maybe not even later, because I think that it's a good, good 
place for me if I, you know, it would be nice to, you know, kind of like tease the audience that if I would, wouldn't would say anything, if I would just start doing, then people would know, oh, it's probably, it's probably now time for thing in the cage, <laughs> thing in the cage, <laughs> you know, yeah. And um, when when we were kind of chatting last summer, uh, and we were kind of arranging our, our interview, you were obviously you were texting me about the the new album and what you were kind of working on, and you said you know you're doing clean vocals for the first time, and I was like, oh my god, what the, what is this going to sound like? What is it going to be? And you would also yeah. tease that oh we might do country when you were doing Lord of Mercy. You said I might do a country song. I wanted to do that. Kind of <laughs> And you were unsure about kind of how how would people perceive it. You didn't give a shit, but of course you kind of you wanted to kind of try it out. And with the bride, we get that song. We get those clean vocals. Yeah, we get that not, kind of the country sound. Not the full so. on, yeah, not the full on country. No, not as much course, as yeah, I yeah. intended. But but there, there's a hint of country there. Exactly. But they, all the country, 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 you know, things are there with the. Uh, um, they come from um, from Kone's guitars because I I asked him specifically. Okay, now we need slide guitars. We need country guitar, you know, thing is here. Yeah. So he said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the song itself mm. is not. I didn't write it melody wise or structure wise. I did not uh, do my university uh, uh, school, so to speak. So I did not listen to country songs. It's it's like a. It's a, it, for me, it's a normal mm, style of ballad or melody or whatever, you know, structure that I yeah. would do in a ballad anyway. Mm, both, both like structure wise and, and, and harmony wise and, you know, music wise, you know, it, it's like that. But I just wanted to have a, like a little bit of the country vibe to it from the guitars and shit, you know, so, okay. so maybe I should have, you know, written a song that it would be full on country, you know, yeah. actually, that I would have actually educated myself a little bit and, and try to write something that actually sounds like a country song. Okay. Now it's like, it has country flavor. Yeah, it's an it, essence you know. to it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, with yeah. the clean vocals, no, thing, why, why did you decide to do clean vocals then for the first time for this why? album? And why is it taking so long to kind of get around to that? Just because I mean, I mean, there there are clean vocals in the in the last I don't know what ten albums. Mm-hmm. And after Kita, there's a lot of my clean vocals in the backing vocals. Yes, there yeah, are, yeah. but you just cannot tell them apart, you know. So they are there, uh, but you really, I mean, it's impossible to. Well, it's one voice amongst many others. So mm. yeah. So why not? And actually, most of the times. On a song, on a Lori album, there is actually the clean lead vocal too. It is mixed with my growling voice there. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. I haven't got, I haven't told you that. No. The, no. The, 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 here, here's the thing. Um, I guess we started doing that on the Aracalypse. Mm, the problem is that, that when I'm doing my normal Lori voice, uh, mm, if your ear isn't that used to hear my voice yeah um you the, you know people don't necessarily hear what what, what is the melody for me it's very clear you know and, I, and if you're and, and i'm sure that for most of the lord of fans it is very clear that where the melody goes but if you play to some you know your next door joe you know there's like, oh it's just screaming it's just rolling there it's like what the hell you know it there's no melody it's like you don't hear it. Okay. Mm, of course, for me, it's very, very clear. But but a good example of this that, that is that that on, on on the Aracalypse we decided to start trying the thing that I will back it up. I will double the lead, which is done by most of the bands in most of the albums. So uh, anyway, you know the the lead vocal is doubled. You know, so there's not only one lead vocal track. There's two, or sometimes even three, that you're seeing the same thing. Okay. And I'm pretty good at doubling. I'm, I'm pre- you can ask crazy about that. I'm, I'm the, I'm the king of doubling. I, I can do an exact same sounding take, you know, again and again. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good guy and copy pasting myself instantly, you know. Nice. So anyway, okay. but That's then cool. when if I sing with my clean voice the second track, which is mixed just a tiny bit there, it, 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 it 
immediately it gives you a better, you know, your once again, your neighbor, everyday average Joe will hear the melody better. If it's just there a little bit to, to back up the melody and make it makes it a little bit clearer, okay. you know. So the clean voice is in most of the song, but here's the trick. There's one song on the Aracalypse, for example, that we didn't do the clean double for some reason on one part of the song. And it's still a mystery, and it will remain a mystery, mystery for everyone. Why did we not do it in the chorus of Hard Rock Hallelujah? And that is the reason why I would say 99% of people in the world they hear the melody of Hard Rock Hallelujah, the chorus, they hear it wrong. Because if, if you ask people how the melody goes in the chorus, they say, Rock and roll, that's, that's not it. That's not the melody. The melody, that, that, that melody is the backing vocals, but that's where your ear tends to go and listen to. It's the backing vocal harmony. The actual lead melody of the lead vocal is rock and roll angels, bring down heart, rock hallelujah. That's the actual lead vocal melody there, which I'm singing every single time there. Yeah. But because it wasn't doubled <laughs> with my clean voice, it doesn't, you know, it do doesn't come across to people. And which is so yeah. weird that, you know, people hear it wrong, but it, it was our mistake. Well, funny. it was yeah. producer Jurgi Tuovinen's mistake, actually, because he didn't, for some reason, we didn't do it. I don't know. Maybe we just forgot. <laughs> you know, maybe at that time when we were recording that song, it was just another song on the album, as it was. I mean, there was nothing special about that song, you know, ab above others, you know, compared to others. So, yeah, there was no, you know, so it, it, it maybe we just easily forgot that. But, mm -hmm. you know, coming back to the thing. So, yeah, clean vocals, that is that is something that that is actually on, on, on Lordy albums quite a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it's just mixed there with the with my normal growling sound, okay. you know. Cool, cool. Yeah. And, um, it's uh, maybe like 30, 30, 20, 30 percent, you know, of, of, the, of the sound on the album usually. And it depends on the guy who's mixing it, yeah. how much we'll use that. Nice. You know? Jesus, that's very interesting, man. And when you kind of look at the album, that it obviously ends with another unique song in many ways, an end credits. And I know from, from listening to that song, especially from the, for the first time I listened to it, for me anyway, uh, it was it was the first time in a Lordy album where we're not hearing Mr. Lordy at all. It's we're hearing Tommy and we're listening to Tommy instead of Mr. Lordy. You know, this is it's a song you've got Partial, seven verses. Partially correct. Partially, <laughs> you've got seven verses. Sorry, no chorus at all. You've kind of synopsized your life in many ways into those seven verses, which I'm presuming that's got to be an exceptionally difficult thing to try and do. Mm, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 Not really. The, the, the hard, hard, difficult thing is to make them rhyme. Okay. It's, nah. It's like, uh, nah. By the way, why I said partially correct is the thing is that there are two other songs and they're both on Dead Egg. Yes. There's uh, Race Hell in Heaven. Mm. It is just me. Yourself, it, yeah. It's not Mr. Lordy as the character and, mm. and Monsters Keep Me Company. That's yes. another one. Yes. So those are the, those are definitely the songs that it's not, it's not a, but of course, they are more like talking in metaphors. And, yes. You know, it's yes, not like, yes. they, are, they are not that clear, mm. but they are absolutely, they are, they are, not the character talking, it's me, you know. Yeah. But anyway, so I forgot the question. What was so is, is it? <laughs> is it hard to synopsize your life at all then into the, into just seven verses? No. Nah. No. No, because I mean, no, it it wasn't hard. It wasn't. It was. It was quite easy. I already. Um, I was thinking that okay, as my funeral song. And as 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 the as the as the you know wrapping up song for this album, it would be nice to have. But I had the idea of, of okay, when you die, your life flashes before your eyes like a film strip. So what would be my film strip be like? You know how what what it would be? What scenes and flashes would it have if I would die now? 
So that that was the point. And of course, uh, that was the time when Lord Yari was Lord Yari was just just you know finished and done and released and everything. So all my childhood memories were clear in my mind and everything. So it it, it was actually very very easy to put those things you know put those things there. So it was really fucking easy okay. to you know, just you know. And I was like like eh. Like like thinking that oh should I mention kiss somehow yeah it's a it's a big thing and then like okay yeah the the, the whole slasher thing I, I mean meaning you know all the horror films yeah they need to be there of course and so but but the thing is that that in a big picture if I look back I mean they don't you know like for example the whole Laurie thing doesn't seem that big to me if I would see you know it it doesn't you know. It only has the line in the in the in the in the end, where it's like like uh, I am a monster. That's my legacy, and that's like, and I was like, kind of like, ah, is this is this uh, is this kind of like embarrassing already? This line, ah, okay, fuck it. I want to be a monster, but I, but you see that I did not add any specifically. I didn't put any Lordy reference there about mm. the Lordy band or anything like that. So actually, the story of that song. And already, I would say it's, it, it ends in the 90s already. It doesn't really mm. have nothing. It doesn't have any reference in any of the lines that, that has happened in the past 25 years, mm. really. It is okay. the, the first 25 years. And I think it's nice yeah. the way it kind of ends as well, because you finish that song with, in many ways, what is your first kind of love, which is nature and you hear the owls and yeah. the forest now i think it's, it's a very nice way to f- to finish that song it does it adds a lot of um i'm just taking a purity to it in many ways and it, when you kind of look at this song because there's a there's a line in it saying i'll be waiting at the gates for you for all the all those that you know yeah. so does do you believe in an afterlife are you spiritual in any way i would like to i would like to believe but i don't know Mm. I, I I mean, yeah. Well, I, I I I guess if I would have to put my money on something, I would say yeah. There's some sort of afterlife. I mean, because if if, if the soul, if we are talking about a soul or or um, consciousness, mm. is it really that it is? I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. In any kind of you know, from scientific uh, point of view, it is only you know electric impulses in a brain inside a brain that's where where your consciousness is but is it really because well you you really don't know because i mean that when you die you don't have a forum anymore mm. to manifest yourself anymore yeah. you know because you don't have the i mean i mean yeah okay. it, it's it's like like yeah that, that, that's what i mean that well nobody knows <laughs> but I, I have a, I, I, but I, I, I have to say that I, 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 I'm thinking that there is, mm, the consciousness doesn't die when you die. Mm. It's not based on anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I just have the feeling yeah. that it is like that. Your consciousness will live on mm. somehow. Yeah. And once again, not based on any rea- reality or real, you know, yeah. things. It just, that it's is just feel. how I feel yeah. Yeah. that it is. Mm. But then again, hundreds of millions of people believe the same thing. Exactly. And, and yeah. you know, all, all, all over centuries, you know, there's, this is what, you know, you know, it's the same thing. I, I think that is somehow it is written in our genetic code that we feel, well, if it's, if it's something that we feel mm. that it is like that, or do we know? that it's like that. I don't know which one is it. But yeah. I, I definitely have have that feeling that the uh, consciousness is like separate from your physical body. Yeah. <laughs> and I I feel that I know it. Yeah. And and I think that there are like I said, gazillion people who have thought about the same thing, uh, you know. Yeah. And you know whether you want to talk about God or you know different kinds of God, and it's all about the same. It's all about the, the same. It has premise. to do with the same exactly. thing, and and yeah. of course the, the all, all the supernatural things, you know, ghosts and spirits and la 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 la. Yeah. It all comes with the same. It, it falls in the under the same umbrella and the same category. It's there. So yeah. yeah. So what I've been saying about the the end credits, the song is that that I wanted that I want that song to be played at my funeral. And if the motherfuckers don't play it, 
I will come back to haunt them. I will <laughs> fucking come back to haunt them. I, I am not a Casper friendly ghost. I'm 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 gonna be full on fucking conjuring fuckface, <laughs> evil dead Henrietta. I'm gonna I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna have my vengeance and revenge <laughs> on those people who are not, you know, yeah. fulfilling my final wish, you know. Uh. <laughs> and um when we were kind of talking a few weeks ago uh, you said that you wanted to talk about something specifically and it was to do with the what was that about, it's a good thing that I reminded you then because yeah. I have no fucking clue what I was talking about <laughs> we were talking about you know the album artwork and the fact that it's different to the band the costumes at the moment and then you were also saying that you know <clears throat> people were getting at the band contact and Sarah who works does all the social stuff for you guys saying when are we going to hear about the album why have we not heard anything there's no information all this shit and you said can we talk about social media because We've spoken about it briefly. It's not really made it onto the documentary style episodes at all. But you mm -hmm. obviously despise social media. And also the fact that <laughs> fans, fans in many ways can, not all of them, of course, but there's a small demographic of fans that are a bit mm -hmm. up their own arses. They want to know everything all the time. They want you to be on social media too. Well, uh, what is your opinion on social media? <laughs> <laughs> My opinion is that it's the it's the root of all fucking evil. It's it's the like like I I cannot accept that. <laughs> yes, like, like and it's fine if you yeah sure. I mean if you wanna share your you know life and thoughts and whatever you know to to everybody else in the world, but. Does it have to include everyone in the world? Does it have to include even me, and who I, who, who's a person who doesn't want to have anything to do with? I don't, I'm a very closed person. I'm a very private person. I don't want to share, and I don't think I don't see how the fuck is it anybody's business? You know, you know the whole thing. And and now more than ever and it's increasingly i get i get these you know people talking to me and they're saying that but you have to understand that social media is is the that, that's how it works nowadays i don't give a fuck if it works like that nowadays i don't wanna you know <laughs> you can work like that but i don't wanna i'm not gonna fucking do that no fucking way yeah but maybe we should do that yeah do it then but don't well i don't you know, don't count me in. I'm not gonna do that. I'm, it's like it, it's something that 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 it really pisses me off. And here, where 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 it comes really, where it really makes me angry, when people have some sort of a weird, I don't know where the fuck do people get the balls or the or the. I mean, who gave them? Who gave them the the the, the right to demand? information at a certain time, for example, from what's happening with Lori. Who who promised them anything? I mean, why can't you just be happy that you will know what will what will happen when everybody else does and, and it will happen you know you know like that. And and I don't understand the whole what happened to patience. Yeah. You know, what why is it so hard to wait as long as everybody else, because you know, when we want to tell some, you know, this is the thing that pisses me off. That that if we are planning things and we're gonna okay, we're gonna do this, or we're gonna do that, we don't want to put it out and tell about it before it's ready, and we already made all the decisions, and this is how we want it to look. But no, there has to be these motherfuckers who are like, no, we need to know. I cannot fucking leave unless I know. Oh, this man, they should fucking tell us now why aren't they fucking doing it why aren't they telling us what's going on fuck off who fucking told you ever that you need like like with what fucking uh right do you have like who gave you the right to demand those things like like i don't get it i i just and it makes me really fucking angry like 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 that mm. the people are complaining that if they don't know in time in time for what like why can't you wait as long as the next guy. I mean, it, you will know at the same time as everybody else will know that when the new album comes out and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Why is it so fucking important for know all the time of what's going on? I, I mean, I, I just, it makes me infuriated.
furious. <laughs> it makes me furious to think like like like. And 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 this time I gotta say that it's it's been more than ever. Right. And I I have a feeling I have a gut feeling my left testicle is tickling in a way that I feel that it's not gonna get better <laughs> over the years. It's 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 gonna it's gonna get worse. Yeah. But then. You know, like, 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 because I, I guess because we are a band, and I, I have to take like most of the most of the blame to myself because I hate that whole you know thing. I, I don't want to share any information before it's done, before you know ev- everything is ready to you know to 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 be displayed to the world. You know, yeah. I don't want any fucking you know stuff out before you know. Mm. So I so and that's mainly me. I'm I'm I. I'm mainly the, the handbrake here that is holding the car, where everybody else is trying to push gas. Like, <laughs> let's go! And I'm like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. You know, yeah. let me get dressed up first, you know, and then then we'll go out. You know, yeah. because I feel like that some sometimes you know, like, okay, we have a show tonight, and I have the same feeling that we would have a show tonight, and then people are, you know, I'm I'm, I'm taking my morning shower and I'm there butt naked with my dick hanging out, and then all of a sudden people are opening up the shower door and pulling me by pulling me by the hand, you know, they come out, come out now already. <laughs> well, I'm a fucking what the hell? That's how it feels like. They're the same yeah. feeling. Like, what? Who the fuck are you to pull me out from the shower? Why? Why? Uh, the show is in the in the evening. What the fuck? Why? Yeah. Let me get ready first. Yeah. And that that's the, that's exactly the feeling mm. that I have mm. with the social media. You know, people who are not. I, I don't get it. Yeah. But maybe we are one of those bands. Uh, probably we are the only few bands. You know, one of those few bands that are that are not that open and not that sharing all the time. And and I guess I guess it has to do with the younger generation with all respect and love for the younger fans. But it's like 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 I guess it's those people who are the most who have a problem with patience. You know. Yeah. That because they are so used that every single artist and everybody's like sharing the information what the what kind of a dump they had in the morning, you know, and yeah. what you know whatever they're doing every single fucking day. So they just can't accept that then there is a band who won't do that. Mm, exactly. And I am, yeah. I am, I am and that, that is like, like, yeah, but I need to know what's happening with Lori. And I understand. Everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is doing it. Or they paid for somebody to do it for themselves. You know, and I understand that today, that's the way the world goes. I understand it. I'm not... I'm, I'm not that stupid. I understand it, but then again, I am not. I'm not gonna. I don't want to change myself in that way. That I'm, and then again, like what the hell could we share even like on daily or even weekly, weekly basis? You know, I'm not gonna you know make myself pretty. You know what that means for every single. But I'm not gonna put on the fucking face for three hours and to do a fucking ten second video clip. Of, hey, so yeah. here I am. <laughs> Try to come up with the lyrics for the new album. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe there's a song about uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll write something about Kremlin. It's okay. See you tomorrow. And then next day, I put on the mac makeup again, and they're like, uh, "No, the Kremlin idea didn't work. Uh, maybe I'll, I don't know." Is it like a? Yeah. Wh- why is that so mm. fucking important? Because the the content, I I just don't know. Uh, there's a level of I wish. I there. wish. I I wish. I you know. I tell you. I wish I could have a gazillion, bazillion, trillion, trillion <laughs> dollars, and I would buy the inter- internet and social media and destroy it. <laughs> That's what I would want to do. <laughs> uh, and I, I, I know I'm, I'm kind of like, like rephrasing what Amen said back in the day. He said that oh, if I would have enough money, I would buy these fucking uh, uh, yellow papers, these tabloid papers, and just you know buy them and then can't you know <laughs> you know bankrupt them, <laughs> and just close them. You know I, yeah. that, that's how I feel. With, yeah. Feel that's how I feel about uh, uh, social media. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean the only good thing about the internet, in, for example, for me is free porn. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I, but I do think that you know there's a level of sincerity with Lordy because I do think I know obviously I'm I'm not a young dude, but I do kind of respect the fact that you go <laughs> yes, to everything. You are. <laughs> and well, not not as young as maybe you know I'm not I'm not my twenties anymore. So no, but. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same point, like I, I do think there's. You're a not a toddler. There. You're saying you're not a toddler. Anymore. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> hair on my balls. Yeah. So exactly. So, yeah. yeah, and your your dick has been to places. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. yes. But I do yeah. think you know that people do appreciate the fact that you guys do wait till everything is perfected and ready to put out there, rather than just putting out like videos all the time and just constantly like irritating people online. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I hope, I, I hope, and I, 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 I hope that at least some of the diehard fans and, and they understand where me and where we are coming from. So they, you know, they understand and they, they accept that. But I know that there are these. There are there are some people who won't accept that. Yeah. They they just like they cannot fucking accept that at all. Yeah. And that is something. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Oh, I just calmed down. So <laughs> I I, <laughs> I was I was about to get get uh, way too excited again. So <laughs> <laughs> calm blue ocean. Calm going. blue ocean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So to kind of finish up, I did, I put a poll or a questionnaire thing out on social media (laughs) for people to get, send in questions. Social media, the the playground of the devil. Yes. (laughs) Well, here are some of the 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 devil's minions. The Bible of lies. Social media, the Bible of lies. (laughs) (laughs) so i have three here they're pretty snappy pretty quick so the first one is from jason sound and he wants to know what is your favorite marvel or superhero movie Ooh, very good question indeed well i do think that the first sam raimi uh versions of the spider-man thing is are are the most I would say the most loyal to the comic books yes. as long as it comes to the feeling that I had when I was reading them when I was a kid. So yeah, I would say those, even though Spidey is not my favorite character, everybody should know that it's the Incredible Hulk, mm. which coincidentally, the, all the Hulk movies <laughs> are the fucking, almost the worst movies in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Especially yeah. the Ang Lee version, which is which sucks as deep and hard, mm. and not in a positive way. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, but then, you know, I, I do like the Hulk as he is portrayed in in the Avengers movies. Then yes, he's yeah. cool and he yeah. looks and he acts like he should be. But for some reason, they cannot make a movie that Hulk would work on an own on on his own movie. The worst movies. I thought I, the, the worst Marvel or superhero movies I thought were the Thor movies until Black Panther came out, <laughs> and, and 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 I just hate that movie. It just it's just like this is it's a bad character and it's, it it doesn't interest me one bit. And it's like like yeah. oh come on. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I would say I, I would say the, the first Spider Man movies, but I do yeah. enjoy the new Spider Man. You know reboots again. Yeah. I I. I well, I love Marvel. I like DC too, not as much. Mm. Mm. Aquaman thing is well, okay, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, Superman is like kind of mm. Batman. Sure, always works. But when you talk about DC and Marvel, I mean, sorry to all the DC fans, but you know, Marvel. I know DC was there first, but you know, Marvel is like. That those are like the real big boy superheroes. Yeah. And and DC, I mean, come on, Green Lantern and shit, yeah. you know, come on. Lame. Superman and, you know, and Batman, who isn't really a, even a superhero. Yeah, so it's like, a wealthy dude. come on. Yeah. And it, yeah. yeah. But, but anyway, anyway, I like, I like Batman, for example, the character. I like Joker. Mm. As a character and shit, I Joker was a good movie, but, it, yeah. but is it a superhero movie? No. no, it's not. It's not a superhero movie. Yeah. I like, you know, when, when DC based, I like the Tim Burton, you know, Batman. Yes. The best, you know, yeah. And I think they're making something else and, now, something Batman based with Michael Keaton in some Flash movie or something like that. Yeah. 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 Um, but so I don't know. I would say the first. Spidey movies, yeah. you know. Maybe not number three. Yeah, it's pretty shit. But that one with Venom and Sandman. Which one was that? The one with Venom and Sandman. Uh, right, right. 
right, 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 right. Not right, Apple right. Green Goblin. Well, one, I, I would say the first one at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, the next question yeah. is from Annie. Uh, Kaloy Benyemi, I think their name is. Sorry for mispronouncing that. Uh, what is the first thing you always do when you get back home from a tour? <laughs> the first thing I do when I step out of the car, when I open my eyes, when I do anything every day, smoke a cigarette. That's what I do all the time. But but the, when I come back from the tour, mm, well, I I don't necessarily unpack my Bags. No, what would be the first thing I would do? I really don't know. I, I, I actually don't. I, I don't know. Okay. What the hell do I do? The first thing, I don't know. Smoke a cigarette. But yeah. then again, that's what I do all the time. <laughs> so, I, 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 I really don't know. I, I, now that I'm thinking of it, like what, what, what is the first thing I'll do? I don't know. I. But because maybe it's just because the moment I get back home, the whole tour is reset that moment. Whoop. Right. And it doesn't, you know, it, doesn't I'm understand. home and, yeah. you know, it continues, it con- continues from the same split second when I left for yeah. the tour. It's yeah. just it, nothing special. It just doesn't, you know, it, there's no big, uh, uh, you know, the, no, nobody has, you know, filled you know, balloons and, and confetti or anything when I come home and there's a big banner saying, welcome home. There's nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the last question I have then for you um, is from Jan Mateska and they want to know, uh, did you, or have you done any drawing or painting in your free time um, when you're not composing songs? Yeah, but I haven't had time i wish i would have but i haven't had any fucking time it's it's um it's something i like to do but i i i I mean for this era now i've been busier than ever before and i was busy as fuck before already yeah yeah. and 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 this is this is i haven't i mean yeah i mean i haven't had the time really I I I I wish I would have more time. I I still look back to the good old days when I would, you know, that I actually had time between studio and tours and gigs and whatever, you know, costume making and shit like everything. That I would actually do some model kits, you know. Yeah. And I would I would paint paintings and I would do something something completely unrelated to water world you know and the, i think the last thing that i had like that that i was doing something i uh built up my own r2d2 oh cool and uh and that was i guess that was that was like when when the hell that was during corona times wow. yeah that was yeah okay so that, so yeah you would yeah I wish I could have more time to do something else, but I, I really, at the moment, I don't have, and I don't, yeah. And it's sad, because yeah. I really, I really miss that. Yeah. I have, occasionally, I have few moments when I'm playing a game or two with my pinball machines, but that that's the only thing, but that's not like creative process, it's yeah. just like reset resetting my brain for a little short moment in time, but, but like, like something that, that, Mm, painting some. Well, I guess the last thing that I was painting was a painting for our lawyer and a good friend, Petteri, who I painted uh, a big Gene Simmons that he ordered. I don't know. He asked, asked me to do that, like, I don't know, fucking five, six years ago. Already, and I <laughs> finally, did, finally did that, like, and that was like a year ago or something. And I, uh, okay. You know, I yeah. did that, but but that that I think it was the last tour or the tour before that when I already had an idea that I, if I would have time on the tour, I would paint a painting, you know, every few days yeah. and just put it on the merch stand, which would be <laughs> kind of funny to, that would to be funny. say that. But it's on the merch stand and there's like a like painting of the day, you know, yeah, that'd be cool, eh? just like. But I yeah. didn't, I didn't, I didn't have the time. And now on the Sabbath and tour. Uh, we are not even allowed to put any extra items there for sale. So, pfft, oh. you know, that, that mm. was like that. Nah. I mean, uh, and, and sadly enough, on Sabbath and Tour, I would definitely have time to, yeah. to paint like a 
painting every, every fucking night. But, uh, uh, well, yeah. maybe, let's see. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's see if people would be interested. Yeah. I could paint them and just sell them outside the fucking the venue. Uh, venue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lordy, for your insights, delights, and frights. Uh, on second thoughts, I think... We've had enough of this shit for this season. I'm just going to talk to you normally now. Um, thanks, Mr. Lordy, for your awesomely detailed answers there. And of course, to Ralph, Mana, Heasy, Hella, and Gone for being part of yet another season of Monsters of Rock. And finally, I'd like to say a big thank you to you for listening, commenting, following, liking, and supporting the podcast. You've helped to make this season a huge success and going forward, I hope you'll be along for the ride. And without a doubt, we'll be back. Not sure exactly when that'll be, but when there's big lordy news, it'll be covered right here. Oh, and keep your eyes peeled for an announcement of the lordy kinds next week. If you're a lordy collector, you'll definitely like it. And... Kiitos kuntolusta. Nyt, nyt on aika sanoa hyvästit ja näitä persestä. Monsters of Rock, The Lordy Story, is a true metal podcast production. The show is presented, produced and written by Matthew Kessing. Head to True Metal Pod's social channels to keep up to date with the production. <laughs>